I got in this electric spreader from my distributor. They said they have pretty good success with them. I wanted to try it out. A lot of folks really despise, you know, PTO attachments. And so this is a nice alternative to a PTO style of spreader. And one of the benefits to that is the fact that you can control, you can get a variable width adjustment on that from as little as five foot all the way up to 45 foot with this spreader right here. You're gonna see that this spreader here in particular is three point hitch compatible. One thing I did have to do in particular was adjust the top link here, this top hook on the quick hitch. So since I had to make that adjustment, I went ahead and made a little modification myself. I actually had bought these pins um, maybe a year ago or so off of Amazon and they came in really handy. They were the perfect size to replace the uh, threaded bolt and nut that was holding the top link, this top hook in place here. And so it's now quickly adjustable where I can easily pull this pin out, take it out, do the same thing with the other one and then lower or raise this top hook as needed. Makes it a cinch. Besides being quick hitch compatible, there's some other great features to it as well. It can be used for a, a wide array of materials, uh, fertilizers and seed, even snow and ice melting pellets. Don't use it for sand, don't use it for salt, but there's a lot of other dry materials that you can put in here. This is going to come equipped with everything you need to go all the way off all the wiring, the harness and everything else, including the variable speed control with an on off switch, and then even some gator clips to tie into your battery terminal. So the gate opener is going to be a manual open and close function here. It's simply a 90 degree, maybe not even that far of an adjustment. Just open and close like this. It's a piece of cake to do. So right down here, this is going to be your gate opening adjustment. Simply loosen the wing nut, slide it to the setting you want with a little arrow indicator here. Let's say it's five, tighten it down and then use your manual gate opener and closer to make that adjustment just like that. So this also comes in a smaller version for ATVs, UTVs, that kind of thing as well. So same exact concept here, same motor that's down below. You get all of this stuff included as well, you know, controller, um, all your wiring and everything with the, with the gator clips that you need for the terminals, some, some brackets to mount it onto the back of your ATV or UTV as well. One thing I didn't mention, because I didn't put it on mine, I'm not sure I'm going to keep it on there permanently or sell it or whatever I'll do, but it includes a bracket. So you can mount, um, you can screw this bracket onto your piece of equipment, ATV, UTV, whatever, or clamp it on, and then have a location to actually mount the, the controller that way. You're gonna see over there, that's a two inch receiver. So it's another option with this spreader. Um, so if you wanna have it, just go right into the receiver hitch. If you guys can see that there for, um, it even shows on the back of a truck or anything else, you know. Got a lot of options, a lot of ways to configure this setup here. Hey, if you like what you see here, would you consider hitting that subscribe button below? Just right underneath the video, hit subscribe. Read the description as well. A lot of helpful links in there to some cool products available on the Amazon store, as well as my website, Goodworks Tractors. Thanks so much for watching. Here we go. So one of the big appeals to me about this setup here with the spreader, whether it's the ATV mount or the three-point mount or the receiver mount, doesn't really matter is the fact that I can use this to apply fertilizer, grass seed, that kind of thing in the summer, and then also use it with ice melting pellets on my driveway or a parking lot in the winter. I really find, and I've asked my distributors over the years for a solution, a good solution that can do both. And while this can't be used with salt or sand in particular, that's more of a specialized type of spreader. You get those ice melt pellets in here and you can use that. It's a nice, you know, multi-season, multi-purpose spreader when you think of it that way. Now I am far from an expert on spreaders. I don't want to pretend like I am. In fact, I'm just a typical homeowner. I wanted a cool product to use. I had a chance to try it out. Want to share it with you. I had some really good results with it with one product that I used and I had some really, really bad results with another product. So as always, there's a lesson learned and we'll go through that today. Now, what was specifically driving me to use the spreader right now was the fact that I am facing some challenges with my dog, Rosie. You know, she is uh, relieving herself in the yard, which is pretty, pretty well expected. The problem is the fact that there's these dead spots all over what used to be a beautiful lawn. And I'm just, it, it's eaten me up, you know, so I got to do something about it. I've been trying uh, different food. I have been trying um, these digestive supplements that are supposed to help. I thought those supplements were helping at first, but I don't think that they are. 
So then, you know, I, I had some feedback. I think I posted something on YouTube. I had some feedback about gypsum, perhaps, and did some more research on that online. As with every other solution, it's maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, you know. So gypsum is the first thing that I was trying out today. I was going to apply it. It says you can do it twice a year, so we're going to give it a shot. Spring and the fall, we'll see what happens. It's a safe product to use around your family, around your pets as well, so that was good. So loaded it up, I bought five bags, 25-pound bags, uh, and had it filled up here. Adjusting the spreader to get it set up, there's a, a chart that comes with all sorts of different materials that you're going to want to spread. And it's going to be based on the speed that you're going with the machine that you're on, uh, the width, okay, so the width of the setting that you have, as well as the gate opening, so the amount of seed actually going through down into this funnel at a time. So there's a lot of different variables that come into play, and of course this specific product is not on this whole huge chart, so I bought a little bit extra just in case I went through it too quickly. But it didn't take very long after uh, just a, a one or two swaths to determine. I was probably going a little bit heavy, so I, I chalked it down to about the number three gate setting on here. Kind of maintained just a constant speed the whole time just to uh, try to keep an even flow, of course. I think overall I probably ended up using a half a bag over what I needed to use, but that's okay. A little bit heavier is not going to hurt in this application. So I will say I thought it was going to be a pain to turn around and rotate this before actually using it when I just saw the pictures of it and hadn't actually used it in person. But in reality, it's not a very difficult process to do. I mean, it's, it's very easy to open and close like this. And you're kind of sort of turned around anyways when you're doing this because you're keeping an eye on the material spreader, right? So you're not completely facing forward all the time. You kind of have one eye back here anyway. And you don't have to be constantly opening and closing. You know, it's just periodically that you're going to be turned around opening or closing. So very convenient, easy to do. Now, if you think the idea of an electric spreader on your three-point is pretty cool, then you got to check out this electric grapple on the front end. You know, so 90% of us tractor owners in the subcompact and compact world do not have a third function remote. That means you have two functions already dedicated to raising and lowering your front end loader and then to rolling and curling a bucket, for instance. If you want to open and close the jaws of a grapple on top of that, you need to have a third function. So what do you do if you don't? Well, you can add one on, but it's really costly. Or you can get something like this, this electric grapple right here that comes with everything you need, kind of the same way that the spreader comes with everything you need, all the wiring harness, a whole thumb control here so that it's right on your joystick and you can just push a button one way or the other to open and close the jaws of the grapple. It even comes with the wiring to route right to the terminals on your battery. So if you're looking to save some money and avoid the hassle of additional hydraulics, then you can get yourself an electric grapple available in the John Deere Quick Attach or a Skid Steer Quick Attach available for me at Goodworks Tractors. So regardless, I think the gypsum is going to be more of a long-term solution versus a very short-term fix-the-problem-right-away solution. Really, I think I'm going to have to get back on uh, the training like I was trying to do a while back of getting uh, Rosie to go in just one spot, maybe just in an area of mulch or uh, in the back corner of the yard, something where it's just not as important to somebody who wants to have a good looking lawn like I do. So this leads me into the next product that I was going to try and Carbon G is a product that I found at my local um, specialty store, I guess I would call it. Site One is the name of it. They're a Lesco uh, distributor and they have a new product out this year called Carbon G and it's a, it's a compost, it's got humic acid, it's supposed to build up the nutrients uh, in the soil, you know, just another soil amendment uh, material that you can put onto your lawn. So it's supposed to be really good overall, and before I bought it, I actually did a little bit of research online. Wasn't a lot of user experience really out there at that point. And uh, the one that I did find, I just didn't remember it or recall it until actually after I bought the product. And it was the fact that that material, the, the Carbon G, was actually uh, kind of damp. You know, not, not like soaking wet where you could clump it up and just ball it up, but it was damp enough. It wasn't a completely dry granular substance and that was something I wish I would have remembered up front. So what I discovered after a couple of attempts with the Carbon G making passes is that it just simply would not filter through, it wouldn't flow, freely flow down like a typical fertilizer or grass seed would do. It would just continuously clog up. It was, it was too damp where it would almost stick to the sidewalls um, or it would stick and just bunch up and kind of compact as, as there's more weight down here in the bottom of the cone and just wouldn't flow through. And so I tried unclogging it multiple times and would have very limited success with that. So then I went back to recalling 
the um, uh, the thread, the forum thread that I had read online, where uh, the gentleman on there had actually cut, you know, cut it by, and I say cut it by adding in a bunch of grass seed to the carbon G, and it helped the flow rate. Okay, it, it kind of broke up the um, the product itself, and so it uh, flowed a lot more smoothly and evenly, and it seemed to get rid of his problems. Well, I had just recently seeded, so I didn't really want to put more seed down. I had seed, but I did have uh, a regular fertilizer application that I was going to put down next week. So what I did is I took a bag of that and I added it in and then I took my shovel, spade shovel, and worked it all the way through everything that you saw here that in this full hopper here thinking that that's going to improve the flow rate, maybe break up those clumps and, and just kind of disperse it a little bit more and let it flow a lot more evenly. Well unfortunately that didn't really help at all. So I went through all that effort, I mixed it all in there tried as hard as I could to get this stuff to flow and spread and I just could not do it and I think in hindsight it just was it was just not the right product you know I think it's very very um, prudent to use dry material only so that damp and kind of clumping nature to the product the carbon G almost a compost well it is a compost actually uh, just did not allow it to flow through here and so that is my mistake you know and again I'm not a professional. If I can help you avoid some mistakes, that's what I'm, I'm happy to do. But uh, it's, you know, one of those things is trial and error, and that's a mistake that I will certainly not repeat again. Needless to say, I ended up just scooping it all out by hand and just kind of sprinkling it all over uh, the backyard, which was a totally, you know, frustrating experience. I had this really cool spreader here, and the first portion of that experience went fantastic with the gypsum, and then uh, you know, it turned into just a pain in the butt there. I thought it was going to be wrapped up pretty soon and it took like an extra hour just to kind of try to sprinkle the stuff all around and, you know, it is what it is. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around. Really appreciate your support. Again, check out that description below. A lot of helpful links in there to the Amazon store, to my website, other places as well. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't done so already and stay safe. We'll see you soon. So I've had this family of bunnies, well, rabbits with their, their bunnies hanging out here at the shop and I don't know they're they're hiding somewhere living somewhere in this uh, <laughs> mess out here but I, I kick one of them up at least one of them up every day from underneath you know one of these attachments out here somewhere but uh, they're definitely calling it home <laughs> out here